Go Jackers! Well, hello all, and welcome to a special episode of Rec Talk today. Uh, so just recently, uh, one of our own, one of Georgia Tech's own, has been named to the College Football Hall of Fame, uh, and that is Paul Johnson. He will be inducted uh, December 5th of this year in uh, Las Vegas into the College Football Hall of Fame. Uh, so he will join the ranks of uh, Coach Heisman, Coach Alexander, and Coach Dodd um, <clears throat> as now the four uh, Georgia Tech coaches that have been inducted to the College Football Hall of Fame. So that's you know, some pretty nice company uh, to be with in the in the coaching ranks uh so uh, paul johnson is a is a somewhat i i think controversial figure uh he's kind of a guy you either love or hate i'm probably one of those few that that's in the middle um but you know his numbers don't lie he was 189 and 100 overall uh, i think he was something, let's see, he was 82-61 and 61 at Georgia Tech. He had nine bowl appearances, three ACC championship appearances. He had four division titles and, and won uh, the ACC one year. Um, so, look, I don't think Paul himself would, would probably disagree with some of this, that you know a lot of people thought he was an a-hole. He seemed kind of grumpy. Um, he was pretty sensitive about his offense and that, that was, you know, especially a lot of the Georgia guys called him PJ, uh, made fun of the offense he ran. The thing is he went to Athens and beat him, uh, three times with far less talent with it, with a silly offense. So, uh, he, he, he did something right. Um, and, and you, and you can criti- give him all of those criticisms. Like he was too sensitive about his offense, um, he seemed kind of brash and 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 not necessarily a likable guy, uh, and he ran a silly offense. But here's the things you can't say about Paul Johnson: is he didn't know how to coach football. Uh, Paul Johnson coached teams showed up ready to play. Um, they didn't make mistakes generally. Like I don't think Paul Johnson got blown out too many times. Like it certainly happened, uh, but especially what we saw after Paul, like. The teams that Paul Johnson coached showed up ready to play uh, week in and week out, and they didn't stop. I mean, you know, we had a 14-point come-from-behind come victory on the road against Georgia. We had, you know, several come-from-behind victories against pretty good teams. Um, and for all the criticisms of his offense, you know, when it worked, it worked. You know, when we got ahead, if we got up by two scores, you know, we would do – I don't know if anyone remembers the Paul Johnson death march where we do an eight-minute drive to, to seal a game. Uh, we saw it uh, all too many times. Uh, so let's just look through, uh, you know, kind of the, the the storied history of Paul Paul Johnson here. So Paul, if you didn't know, has uh, one similarity with Jeff Collins. They both uh, are uh, – both of their alma maters are Western Carolina University, Paul – I did his undergrad there, did his graduate studies at App State. He did, he himself didn't play college football, which is not necessarily uncommon for for coaches. It's like it's not a requirement that you play collegiate sports. Um, and his first collegiate um, job was uh, was at none other than Georgia Southern, where he's certainly a legend. Uh, he actually started off, I think, as their defensive line coach for a year uh, and then moved to their OC. So he was – he was there from 1983 to 1986, and you. This is a guy you probably don't know unless you went to Georgia Southern, or, or for you know you're a huge Georgia Southern fan. He coached a guy named Tracy Ham, uh, who was a quarterback <clears throat> for him, and uh, probably the best player Georgia Southern's ever had. He didn't end up going in the NFL. I think he did after his uh, CFL career. But he went to the CFL first. Um, suffice to say, the dude knew how to coach offense, right? <clears throat> so he then takes the offensive coordinator job at Hawaii. Uh, he's there from 87 to 94 and ends up having one, one of, not one of, he, he ends up having the best season that Hawaii's ever had in 1992 where they finished 11-2, and two, which is 
uh, the best record they've had in program history. And this kind of becomes a theme for Paul as he starts moving up, uh, you know, the coaching ranks. Um, then he goes uh, to Navy, um, his first first stint at Navy as their offensive coordinator. Um, struggles uh, in, in year one, but um, – and 96 has their first winning season in 14 years at Navy. They go 9-3. and three. Uh, He then takes the head coaching job uh, at Georgia Southern. He's there from 97 to 2001. And uh, this is really uh, the main reason. Well, I, I wouldn't say the main reason. This is a good part of why he's going into the College Football Hall of Fame, though. As much as I'm a tech homer, you know, I bleed white and gold. Um, the guy absolutely killed it at Georgia Southern as their head coach. Uh, he made three national title appearances at the Division One AA level. <coughs> Excuse me, and ended up winning back to back national titles um, in '99 and 2000. Uh, he had an overall record at Georgia Southern of 62 and 10. That's an 86 percent. Winning percentage, and he is one of only four coaches to ever win 50 games uh, in, in their first four seasons at the Division One level. Um, so, yeah, absolute co- – anyone who's a Georgia Southern fan uh, knows who Paul, Paul Johnson is and uh, absolutely made that triple option uh, work for him. And, look, for the, the criticisms of the triple option, the, here's the nice thing about it, and, and there's reasons why it's really not run anymore – but what you essentially are able to do is take, hopefully take out the two best players on the opposing team's defense. So you can take the defensive end out toward your motion side or if you're countering toward the opposite side of your motion. Um, and then you can take out that outside linebacker. So now you're playing 11 on 9, essentially. And when it's run right, um, it's really difficult to stop. Um the problem with it is, is it's difficult to recruit with it because you don't have a featured back, and you're not going to have a quarterback that can throw, you know, really, really well. Though, you know, we had a good one with Justin Thomas. Um, but anyways, I digress. Uh, so after he wins back-to-back natties uh, at Georgia Southern, he ends up taking the head coaching job at Navy, which is uh, more of the same historic, uh, you know, season. So. Uh, struggles his first year, um, but then in two, so he's there from 2002 to 2007. Uh, he goes 10 and 2 in 2004, which is the best season Navy had had since 1957. Uh, so, <laughs> the basically in 50 years, the best season they had had, and he was the uh, national coach of the year that year. So he he was uh, the best coach in college football that year, as voted on by I don't know if coaches vote on that or media people. Um, but you know, pretty impressive. Um, and then, you know, our very own Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets hire Paul Johnson and, uh, you know, he comes off the heels of Chan Gailey. Um, the, the issue with Chan Gailey is that he wasn't able to beat Georgia. You know, maybe we'll make a video at some point in the off season since we're going to need topics about Chan, but, um. Paul had the benefit of having a top 10 recruiting class when he came in, and boy, did he utilize it. So he had uh, Jonathan Dwyer, Roddy Jones, Roddy White, um, Josh Nesbitt, you know, some pretty good players on defense, Michael Johnson, Derek Morgan, uh, wide receiver Bebe Thomas. I don't know if he was in that class or not. I think he actually was, you know, Bebe Thomas. Um you know, Paul Johnson coached some really good players, and and strange, uh, oddly enough, you know, some really good wide receivers. Um, so while he was at Tech, you know, Paul was eighty two and sixty one. Uh, he he had uh, four division titles. He has uh, an ACC title, and he's three time ACC Coach of the Year. Um, so again, for all the criticisms against the guy, I mean, he knew what he was doing on you know on some level. Now, if you look up the 2009 um, ACC championship, it'll say that it's vacated, which is absolute uh, BS and nonsense. Uh, it's vacated because the NCAA took it away uh, because someone gave Bay Bay Thomas a tracksuit. 
which I can't imagine was a hundred dollars at most, probably less than that. Um, but we won. We're, we we have an ACC title from two thousand nine. No one's ever going to convince me otherwise. Um, that is the nonsense of of the <coughs> NCAA regulatory body. Um, but man, Paul Paul had some fantastic victories at Tech. Um, I mean, you just look at some of the players that he coached. Um, Darren Waller is another wide receiver, probably the best tight end in the NFL right now. Um, Demarius Thomas, you know, uh, rest in peace. A- absolute, what, what, top five wide receiver in the NFL uh, when he was in. Um, Justin Thomas, you know, who was probably the best option quarterback could could you say in the history of college football? I mean, just that that was a pure triple option guy and was deceptively good in the pass game. You know, we only we probably only passed fifteen or twenty percent of the time, but um, you know, he made some clutch some clutch throws throughout the year um, or throughout the years that he was there. He was a track star out of Alabama, um, but I think this is well deserved. You know. Um, I think I kind of think Paul was hilarious. <laughs> uh, in fact, uh, let's look at uh, how he handles a UGA caller barking at him on, on the call-in show. Bubba, you're on the air with. Hello. Yes, sir. Go ahead. <laughs> hello, hello. He just got off from Walmart. No. <laughs> uh, I got, I got. There's some great fans from both teams. Yeah. And most of the fans are classy, but anybody who calls into radio show and barks is either retarded or doesn't have a life. <laughs> Do I need to sugarcoat it any better than that? No, no, that was, I feel. And that's probably why some people uh, really dislike the guy. That's probably something that would get you fired today if you said it, but, uh, you never say that Paul didn't didn't call it like he like he saw like he sees it. Um, and to Paul's credit, you know he was uh, really talking about the things that Tech is starting to do now when he was coaching. Um, so you, if you notice, we've hired a um, like director of player or a director of high school relations and some offensive defensive analysts. These were things Paul was wanting to do. Um, while he was there that he wasn't able to get the support to do. Uh, he was even talking about facilities, said, hey, look at Clemson's facilities, what their, just what their recruiting staffs look like. You know, they're probably twice the size of ours. Um, you know, we, we really need to improve on these things. And he kind of had to walk it back with the AD uh, at the time. Um, <clears throat> and I know most people will probably say, well, what t- set Tech back was running the triple option. Oddly enough, I think the success Paul was able to have at Tech might have might have set it back from the standpoint of the powers that be looked at, you know, what Paul was able to do with the limited resources and the recruiting classes he had and said, hey, you know, this is good enough. There's no need to, to spend any more money or add to anything that we have, you know, right now. Um, so kind of paradoxically, Paul's success might have uh, – I don't know, convince the powers to be that, that we don't need to invest uh, in, in any more staff or, or for anything like that. But, look, I love Paul. I think Paul was was fantastic. I think he, you know, he made me laugh. I think his players were always ready to play. I think he won a, a, a ton of ball games that we probably wouldn't have otherwise won. And, you know, generally was always winning with with less talent. Um the the first year he was at Georgia Tech in in '08 he was projected to go three and nine he ended up going nine and three and then winning the ACC the next year I mean under Paul we were we generally always finished above where we were projected to finish so um, again I think well deserved and I also say Mark Richt has also been inducted this year um, and though though he coaches for for our uh, Art rival, I think you know. I think Mark Rick's a fantastic coach. I think he's a fantastic guy, and and also well deserved. And I, I hope him the best with his health. I know he has Parkinson's now. It seems to be progressing, um, you know, fairly quickly. Um, but well deserved for both of them. So, 
to close out the video, I wanted to go through, um, this is just my top five kind of most thrilling uh, victor victories that we had under the Paul Johnson era. So number five, uh, I think you it, everyone will know this name that's a Tech fan, uh, the kick in the pick. This was actually a game I – I wasn't at. I've been to the last few Georgia Georgia Tech games that were at in Sanford. <clears throat> and when this kick hits, we're about to see the the what 51 yarder. I clapped my hand so hard watching the TV. I'm pretty sure I fractured my right hand. It hurt for like two weeks after that. So number five most thrilling victory under Paul, the kick in the pick. One blocked earlier. He is 10 of 17 on field goals this season. He is 0 of 1 on field goal tries over 50 yards. Butker marks off his steps. Rodwell will hold it. 53 yarder left hash to send this thing to overtime. Here comes the kick. It's on the way. And it is good! Butker got it! He cleared it by about a half yard, but he got it! And we're tied at 24 and destined for overtime. What a kick. Second down and goal from the nine. Three receivers right to the wide side of the field. Hudson Mason is thrown for 194 yards. This time passes and it is intercepted. Intercepted. Picked off. <laughs> picked off. It's picked off. It is DJ White. And if you're a Tech fan, it never gets old <laughs> watching that clip. Uh, yeah, uh, we had like less than a 3% chance of winning that game. Georgia ends up scoring with 18 seconds left uh, to go ahead. Uh, they end up sky kicking it for some reason. We are able to get a good return, and uh, Thomas is able to scramble us into field goal range. And uh, – Harrison Bucker might be one of the best kickers in the NFL right now. Ends up uh, hitting a game-time field goal. So, number four, another one that has a famous name, uh, the Miracle on Techwood Drive. Now, this was a game I was actually at, and uh, it was absolutely fantastic. Tech was not having a good season. Uh, Florida State comes in ranked number 10. Um you know, looking that they've got, you know, national title aspirations. Jimbo Fisher, uh, you know, needs to have a good season. And, you know, this couldn't happen. If you watch the live show, uh, you'll know Jimbo Fisher was number five on my degenerate human beings in college football list. So, uh, man, this was a good one to be at. Tonight, but those were all inside of 40 from the left hash. 56-yarder, just like last week against Pittsburgh. Kick is blocked! Georgia Tech blocks it! The Jackets pick it up back in the 25, and Austin is returning it down the left oh, side. Line. Past the 50, he's got past the 30. Inside the 20, and he's got to be kidding me! And he scores! He scores! Lance Austin picked up the block kick! And return it all the way to the house of the north end zone. We've had the what a time to be alive. Uh, no one could believe it in the stands. We were all just like we we're going crazy. We we're like, did that really just happen? Is this gonna stand? Um, yeah, absolutely amazing. And then it you know it cuts to Jimbo just like, huh? What? Yeah, Paul, Paul finds a way to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. Uh, number three. Uh, is the t another game I was at, uh, 2009 Virginia Tech upset. Uh, Virginia Tech comes into Bobby Dodd, um, number five in the country. They had a quarterback. Uh, some of you might know Tyrod Taylor. Ended up having a pretty good NFL career. And uh, for the longest time, Virginia Tech just had a string of really athletic quarterbacks. The Vicks, Tyrod Taylor, um, you know, all the, all these athletic quarterbacks out of out of Virginia, they were able to get. Um, and Josh Nesbitt and company, and and my boy Paul Johnson were able to put on uh, a clinic. Uh, so yeah, uh, number three is the 2009 Virginia Tech upset. Nesbitt 
Nesbitt on the near hash. Here's Nesbitt coming on the option. Got the block. 30, 25, 20. And Nesbitt 10, 5. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. Time in the building. All finding a way to get wins against uh, against really good teams. Uh, number two, uh, going back to that 2014 season, uh, the 2014 Orange Bowl. Uh, we end up getting to go to the Orange Bowl. I think Florida State ends up getting getting a playoff uh, spot. Uh, so we ended up being the ACC team that gets uh, to go to the Orange Bowl. Uh, and we, we draw Mississippi State. Uh, who was coached, I believe, by Dan Mullen at the time and had a quarterback uh, you've probably heard of in Dak Prescott. You know, this was, this was a good Mississippi State team that we were able, I wouldn't say to beat easily, but beat it, be, were able to beat pretty convincingly. Uh, Sinjin Days had a great, great game. Uh, Justin Thomas, Darren Waller uh, all had really good games. Uh, so number two, uh, most thrilling victory under Paul Johnson, uh, which is also what the graphic is behind me, the 2014 Orange Bowl. When we throw it, we mean it. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. Darren Waller. You saw the flag in New Jersey. So yeah, that was Darren Waller catching that touchdown pass too, and I, you know, I love watching him watching him on Sundays. Um, and number one, it could be none none other than the 2009 ACC championship. Again, you're never going to convince me uh, that this is vacated. We didn't really win uh, the ACC championship that year, uh, but won it against Clemson. It was you know obviously it's a rematch anytime we play Clemson in the ACC championship, um, and that will still be true because there are. Uh, conference rival that we play every year um so paul's second year he's able to win uh, the acc championship at the tiger 15 yard line right now the only thing that would really make the plans for georgia tech go awry is turning the ball over that's right and so i'm sure paul johnson told his team when they had him on the sideline there get what you can get and get down, protect the ball, because Clemson's only shot right now is to pull the ball out. The 13th play of the Georgia Tech drive. Dwyer to the outside. Dwyer, touchdown! So... Uh, that's what I have. Again, congratulations to Paul Johnson. I think it's well-deserved um, and nice to have another uh, coach, fourth coach in the Hall, uh, College Football Hall of Fame. And I will talk to you guys later. Made some plays at the end. Took it in in the fourth quarter to get back the lead. Once we got the lead, they weren't getting it back in. Needs to start right now in here. Can't start in the second quarter. Can't wait till halftime for me to come in yelling. It's got to start right now.